Howdy! How's everybody out there in the internet zone and <laughs> in, in Patreon land? I'm going to try to bring you a video, Fishing Lures. And we'll start out by showing you some that I have carved out. These are hand carved from wood. Now these are probably going to be a little tangled up. But the hooks like to get all tangled up here. I'll see if I can untangle them without them getting me. There we go. Well, almost. There we go. These are different shapes and sizes. I never make two alike. And I thought you might enjoy looking at these and try to hold it in such a manner to you can see them but see how they're the shape of a little fish they've got an eye hook and a treble hook in the belly the nose and the tail they're different sizes and different shapes I have hydro painted these and I'll do a video on that so you see how to hydro paint and all different kinds of them. See this one I made some, see if we can get this in here so that you can see how I put like a little dent in the sides of this to re kind of represent some gills on that one. I've got a great big one here that's, I call this in Moby. And I've got a small one here that I gave kind of a funny tail to him, a little curved tail. So that you can make them all different ways. And every fisherman's going to like different colors or shapes or whatever, you know, when they want to buy one of them from you. And if you want to learn how to carve, doing these fishing lures is a real good way to do it. I'm trying to get these wrapped up here so that I don't get them hung up on every dad burn thing in the studio here. I wrap them in bubble wrap. <laughs> That way if the hooks get hung in that, they ain't going to get hung in everything else. Now, when you're carving, when you're going to start your carving, you want a sharp knife. It can be any kind of knife you want. There are cheap knives or expensive knives. The biggest difference between a cheap knife and an expensive knife is the cheap knives are not going to hold their um, sharpness. Their beveled edge is good as a uh, more expensive knife, a better knife, and some of the more expensive knives have fancier handles on them than the cheap knife. This is just a cheap knife here. I I figured a lot of you might not want to be putting a bunch of money into a knife until you figure out if you like doing this or not. This is a Victoria Knox blade on this, and uh, it, it's just a you know plastic composite handle on it. Nothing fancy. A little curved blade to it. Most of your uh, carving knives will have kind of a curved blade. And you don't want any chips or nicks in your blade. Um, it does want to have a, a bevel on it. And I'm trying to get this in the light here. See if I can get the light to shine on it. Show you the bevel on that blade. I don't know if it's going to show up there on camera or not. Twist it around a little bit. There we go. Now you can see the bevel on it right there. Now, if it's got a bunch of chips and nicks and stuff in it, it's going to need to be run through a knife sharpener, a really good knife sharpener, to sharpen them up. Once you get them sharpened up, they are going to dull down a little bit. As long as you don't have a bunch of nicks and chips in your blade, all you got to do is strop it. Now, a strop is a board that has a piece of leather on it. And you can see there on the edge of it, this is the leather. It's glued down to this board. On the leather you're going to put this stuff called honing compound. It's a um, micro fine honing compound. And you can get this at most any of your home improvement stores. Uh, some of the hardware stores will carry it. You can get it online. And it looks like a great big old crayon. That's what it looks like. And they're green in color. And what you do is you just you use this just like you would a crayon. And you kind of color it. You rub it on this piece of leather and get that honing compound all rubbed down on that leather good see see how you I've got that green this is the green color right down on that all right 
This will last you, oh Lord have mercy, for several generations. It <laughs> lasts forever. See, let's say this knife is dull, which it's not. It's sharp. But if this knife was dull, here's how you're going to sharpen it up. You put it on the leather, flat down on the leather, with your finger on the blade. You raise the back of the blade up, back here on the back, the back side of it. You raise that up just a tiny bit. And you're pressing down on this beveled edge. And you're going to run that. I call it running it backwards. Against the, the blade. Run it backwards. You never want to take the blade down on the honing compound. You want to run it back. With just just raise the this back side of it up just a touch. If you want the blade of it down on that honing compound, and you run it several times down that honing compound, and that honing compound will hone your blade. Now, when you get one side done, then you're going to do the other side, and same thing. You push the blade down on. You raise this the back side of this blade up just a little bit with the beveled edge down on the honing compound and you drag it back across that honing compound several times and you just drag it and drag it and drag it and that sharpens up your blade that honing compound hones the blade that's what it's supposed to do all right you can get all kinds of tools and stuff for carving this is my little set of gouges. These have all different kinds of, of ends on them. They're, and they're beveled one way or another way, or they're twisted a little bit, or they got little scoops in them for scooping uh, on the wood. So you, you can get all different sizes of these. This is just a little tiny set for doing fine detail work. Uh, you can get great big ones if you're doing uh, great big relief work, pictures or something that you need to take out a lot of material. Um, you can get different kinds of handles um, on these. I suggest getting a good old set from somebody that's in good shape. You can find them a lot of times on eBay or, or any of the, the uh, auction channels. Um, if you talk to some of the woodworkers in your area, wood carvers, a lot of times they'll have a set that they're willing to part with. Over the years, people tend to get a lot of tools that they don't need and need a little money once in a while. And they'll let a nice set of, of uh, tools go at a reasonable price. So I suggest getting in touch with your wood carving clubs in your area. Talk to um, uh, most anybody at the the, uh, um, well, shoot, my mind's going blank on me here. The um, town councils or the uh, city offices or anybody that knows anything about clubs and stuff in your area. If you have a uh, kind of a, like a clubhouse in your area, we have a, a big community building in our town where all the clubs tend to meet and have their meetings and, and things. And, uh, that's where our club, our Carver's Club, meets every Wednesday night. So if you get in touch with the, the building there, they can tell you, you know, if there's a wood carver's group that meets there. Um, sometimes you talk to people that's in different clubs, and they can tell you about other clubs in the area. So, you know, talk to them at the lumber yard. Because <laughs> everybody that's a woodworker ends up at the lumber yard trying to get some wood. So, you know, talk, ask around. Somebody will know somebody that's a wood carver that belongs to a club, and you can get involved, and it's a lot of fun to go to the club meetings. These guys sit around, they tell all kinds of stories. Uh, some of them are true, some of them ain't. They tell jokes, they'll do, oh, Lord have mercy. All kinds of things go on. On my YouTube channel, I put up our weekly meetings there on the YouTube, and, you know, you can listen in on some of the talk that goes on at the meetings, and it's a lot of fun. But back to carving. Okay, then you're going to, once you have a knife, good sharp knife, you're going to need a glove. You put this on the hand that you are not holding the knife in. I'm right handed. I hold my knife in my right hand. So I put my glove on my left hand. This is a Kevlar glove. Of course, you got to buy a pair of them, but for carving, you only wear one. 
and you put it on your left hand and when you are carving if your knife slips it's not going to cut through this glove. If you're gouging with the point of the knife, it's not going to stop the point of the knife from going through this glove. So you will get hurt that way. But there should be absolutely no reason in, in this world that you would be gouging at something with the point of your knife. If you're doing that, you deserve to get cut. Lord have mercy. So, <laughs> with that being said, you're going to need some wood. Now, this is basswood. And this is... Uh, Oh, I'm going to say about uh, half an inch, three-eighths of an inch, something like that thick. And it's the sticks that I have are about a foot long. And then you're going to need a pencil. And you're going to rough out your design on your, on your uh, piece of wood. Uh, and you just draw it on the one side. Now, I draw them different shapes. And you don't have to stick to that shape. You can always erase or, or sand off a pencil mark, for crying out loud. But I want a basic shape. So, let's see if I can get this camera here so it can see this good. You're going to go up on one side like this, make a curve. And bring it down to make a tail, like that. And you're going to come around this side, and you're going to make another curve, right like that. And then you're going to bring it up, and just like that, and then a little line. Okay? Right in here is where you're going to put your... I hook at the tail. You're going to put one in the belly down here, and you're going to put one up here in the nose. Okay, so this this kind of needs to be flat. Your nose is going to be not real flat, but a little flat. And the the belly doesn't really need to be flat. It's going to be rounded. And you it you'll see when we get into this. But here's one that I've already carved out and sanded. And you can see there's enough room there on the belly of this where you can put an eye hook in there. Simple enough. All right, and that's what it's going to look like once we get it carved out before it's painted. Now, we've got one here that I've been whittling on. I've done cut one off. This is the one that I cut off of it and sanded down. And you're just going to carve away anything that's not your line there, pretty much. And you take, I generally kind of rest it on the, the table a little bit so that I have something to brace it with and then I take my knife and I just start scraping at that wood just whittling a little piece off at a time and it's not a fast process you're not look this is this is a handmade product carving is a relaxing hobby you are not running a foot race here so you don't take your knife and try to gouge down in there and, and hack out a big piece of it. You're whittling. You, you're going to be making shavings. See this under here? These are shavings that come off of there. You're just making shavings. Now, I should save all my shavings because some of you probably seen the video that I've done with Shelly Cole from Know What Mom Knows where we save up our shavings and we make a product it's called sawdust dough that she came up with it it's it's a sawdust product that you make this special glue and it, it's a simple glue recipe she's give it out on her channel know what mom knows that you mix this glue up and then you mix the glue with shavings and it makes a a product that you can turn into a lot of different things and i'm going to be doing some work with that and you're going to get to see that here on the Patreon. But uh, one one project at a time, okay? So we're going to just car go to carving out anything that don't look like a fish. If you use carving pigs, you'd carve away anything that don't look like a pig. <laughs> and you just cut away a little bit at a time on that. Now, if I had a better knife, if I was using, you know, a more expensive, fancier knife with a fancier blade and all that, I would probably be able to do this a lot faster. I'm not trying to run no foot race. This is a little process that you just take your time with. Now, when we get up here in the nose, we're just going to go to back cutting it. So, you just cut down a little bit, cut in a little bit, and we're just cutting right down on this piece of wood cutting down for the nose on that fish just whittling away anything that you don't want to be part of your finished product and 
And sometimes you got to turn it around the other direction, carve on it the other way a while. Now I only draw on one side of it because once you get this basic shape carved out, then you're just going to shape the other side to go right along with it. And you'll be turning it back and forth, back and forth, just taking a look at it, just sizing it up until you get it just the way you want it. But until I get this, you know, trimmed down good, I don't want to take it off this because this gives me a good handle to hang on to for my carbon. So I'll just take a knife and just shave it off. Just keep shaving it off a little bit at a time. But I like doing this over on the Patreon channel because on YouTube, especially since they changed all their rules and stuff over there, everybody's in a big panic and in a big rush. And nobody has time to watch videos over there anymore. And they're not really wanting to learn anything. They're just wanting to jump from one channel to the next, see how much ground they can cover. And it gets frustrating as a creator because I'm trying to create really good content for people that want to learn how to do the craft. Not people that's just trying to channel jump and figure out how to make monetization with a company that has absolutely no intention of having you monetized. Uh, once you get monetized, they're going to up the ante over there. And not only that, but if they can find any reason under the sun in all of their rules and regulations, take that monetization away from you, they're going to do it. YouTube... As far as being creators is concerned, in my opinion, it's a big waste of time. Um, it, it's only good if you can get people to watch your videos, and right now ain't nobody watching them. Uh, there's a lot of playing in the background going on, and uh, you know I'll be the first to admit I'm helping people with playing stuff in the background. Sure, I am. Um, you know, people really want to try to get to that monetization level. Heck, I'll help them, but. I don't think it's going to do any good, really, but, you know, that's for them to find out. They won't find out until they get there. But in the meantime, we're going to be over here trying to learn something. Now, this is just going to be cut out rough when I get it chiseled off here. Take as much of the material off of it as I can to get it shaped up the way I want it shaped before I chisel it off the stick. And the reason for that is that it'll be less sanding that we've got to do. There's going to be a lot of sanding have to go on on this. How do I know? Well, I've made a whole pile of these. <laughs> That's how I know. Trying to keep this under the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Make it easy for you. See how there's the line right along there. So all that material is going to need to come off of there. You want to try to carve away from yourself, not pull the knife towards you. You want to push the knife away. Making piles of shavings. Basswood is a nice soft wood to carve with. There's all kinds of different woods that you could use. But basswood is the most popular wood, especially for beginners, because it is a softer wood to carve. The basswood that comes from the west is softer than the basswood that you'll get in the south or the midwest. A 
lot of people like to carve with pine. But there's a lot of interesting woods to try to carve with. I've watched them at the, the carvers meetings with their different kinds of wood that they like to work with. So when you have several of them lined up in a row like this, you're kind of working on two of them at a time because I'm taking the, this one down toward the tail on that little fish while I'm trying to get carved up for getting the nose off of this one. here so I can get at him, get at that belly a little bit better. Now you can sand them on a um, electric sander if you want to or you can use a Dremel to sand them if you want to. There's a lot of different ways that you can sand these. It's a lot faster than doing it by hand. You know if you're really in production wanting to you know sell these to, to the store or something like that then yeah you, you know you're probably going to want to use Dremel and I have used Dremel or or sanding um, belt sander to to sand them if I was in a big hurry trying to get them done. But for a really handmade product, then you do it all by hand. Scrape of the knife against the wood, taking it off. Anything that ain't a fish gets to come off of there. This fish has a big old belly on her. I'm going to be doing all kinds of projects here on Patreon. I mean, there's going to be weaving projects. There's going to be painting projects. Um, I plan on doing a lot of things over here that are not going to be shown over on Twitch or on YouTube. This is this is just for my folks that really want to learn that are going to support me with Patreon. Eventually, uh, as I get more sponsors here with Patreon, I'll be getting better equipment, running some better software, being able to bring you a little bit better quality on the videos, and make the learning experience a little more fun for you.
you see how we're just taking it down little by little there's the nose of the, the one fish there's the tail of the other one so we're going to take this part right here in the middle we're going to be taking it out of there we just make a notch and flip the little piece of wood out of there same thing on this side we're going to make a little notch there's a little piece of wood coming out of it you just take a little bit at a time Rome was not built in a day Making the shavings fly. Just keep working your way around it, taking out just little pieces, and you eventually get it whittled away. And there it goes. It snaps right off of there. Now, there's there's our basic shape. Now we can whittle away a little bit more on that. Take a little bit more material off of it. To shape it up a little bit better. My knife needs a little honing, getting a little dull. So watch me just hone that down there. Back the other way. Do it this way again. And take it that way again. Now, if you want to know if your knife is sharp, let's see, I've got a piece of paper over here. If you want to know if your knife's sharp, you take your knife against that piece of paper and it should just cut right through that piece of paper. And mine's not quite cutting it, it's just kind of tearing it. So we're going to hone it a little bit more. And now let's see what it will do here on this piece of paper. There it goes. See how it just sliced right through that. Alright, we know she's sharp. 
I'm going to take just a little more material off of this. I rounded up that face a little bit there. We'll be able to shape it a little bit more with the sandpaper. What we want to do with it. I don't use sandpaper though. I use uh, Abranet. It's a sanding cloth. And I'll show that to you here in a minute when we get ready to hit that part. We'll take a little bit more off here and shape him up just a little more. Okay, it's coming along. The more you shape with the knife, the less you have to sand. All right, I'll push all my shavings off to the back there. Got different grits of this. I've got 180, I've got 240, I've got some 320, and the lower the number on the back of the sanding cloth, the um, coarser the grit is. All right. So we're going to go with this 180. Now this is Abernet. It is a sanding cloth. Um, the fines or the the dust the, that we sand off, the wood dust, goes right through this, right onto the table. Sometimes I take the, the sandpaper to the wood and sometimes I take the wood to the sandpaper. It just depends on what kind of a um, angle I need to get on it in order to sand it. And we start out with the coarsest grit. This is the one that's going to do the most work. This is going to take us down to a nice um, shape. And then we're going to be knocking off all the roughs with the smoother sandpaper. You have to have the rougher to take more material off. So that's what we're doing. Is we're just sanding the dickens out of this. Now I save all my shavings. We'll put all my dust and coarse stuff and bags that I keep for making the Sodesto. When I get all done with this, after I get it all sanded and smooth, then I come in with alcohol and wipe the desk down and wipe it down with the alcohol and that's like a tack cloth and it takes all the dust off of everything when my hand gets tired too that's another reason that I'll take the 
the lure to the sanding cloth. Sometimes my hand gets tired with my arthritis. And it's whatever gets it to the shape you need it shaped in. <laughs> All the, the roughness of it is going to be sanded away. And just keep doing it until you get it done. I mean, there's, you know, how long does that take? It takes as long as it takes. Take a look at it every once in a while and see if you're getting the, the shape you want or if you need to change directions on it any. Still some roughness up in there from carving, so I want to take that down. Okay, that part's doing pretty good. Now, I'm going to do this back end here. The tail on the back. The sanding cloth is so flexible. It's Velcro on one side, so you could put it on a sanding block if you wanted to, but I tend to just hold it in my hand and use it this way. I can bend it and shape it to whatever shape I need to get in whatever nooks and crannies I need to get into to sand stuff this way. But you see there's material coming off. Look at all this dust. This is what we're taking off of this. That's all wood dust right there. So while you may think, well, oh lord, she's not making no progress. No, I'm making a lot of progress. A lot of material coming off there. It's smoothing up and looking good. Let's see a place up here that needs to be hit yet. Smoothed off. Okay, now I'm going to set the cloth down here, and I'm going to start sanding on his tail. I want his tail to be pretty flat, so I'm going to have to take some of that off of there. So we're going to make some dust. you see what it's doing. See it's going a little flatter than it was. Keep working on it. Taking off anything that don't look like a little fishy. There's all different kinds of ways that you can paint these when you get ready to paint them. I like the hydro dipping and like I say, I'll be showing you that in an episode. It, it's easier than trying to make them look realistic and trying to put the gills on them and all that sort of thing. Um, I mean, not that the gills are all that difficult. You use a piece of screen to do that if you want to put, or not gills, but scales on them if you want to do that. Um, but the hydro dipping, I say that the fish love them with the hydro dip method. And... After all, catching fish is what this is all about. Get down here on this belly and 
smooth that all up good. Take any rough edges off of the sides. Go around in it. There's a little roughness there around that tail, so I'm going to go smoothen that down. And the way I do that is I just keep turning it as I sand. Just round that up. up. So that a little rough spot there on the bottom. While I'm working on this, I'll tell you that I have an Instagram. I have a um, Twitter account. The Instagram, I don't, I can't really use it. I don't have a smartphone, but I do see everything that, you know, people post to me there. Um, I have a Twitter account that I post a little bit to. And, um, I have the Twitch channel, and I have the YouTube channel, I have an Etsy store, all that stuff's in the description of the video, you should be able to pull up anything you need there in order to get in touch with me, leave me comments on the video, ask me questions, whatever your fancy is, I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. Working on the belly of the little fishy. Making that all smooth. Okay, now, let's take another look at our little fishy. I'm going to work on this nose a little bit here. Take all that roughness off of there. See if we can shape that face up a little bit there for a fishy. Got an awful rough schnoz on him. Smoothing down nice though.
Okay, down in here needs a little bit more work. It's a little rough. Like I say, devil's in the details. You gotta just keep on until you get it smoothed out the way it should be. Don't rush your project. And you see there on the header, it has the URL for my Etsy store. And you can look at my Etsy store and see a lot of pretty things that I got up there. I got my, my soap and I got my oil and I've got dream catchers and jewelry and I've got a lot of my art up there. Birthdays, anniversaries. Mother's Day, Father's Day, weddings, and I do custom things too, so if you don't see what you want up there, just get in touch with me. I'd be happy to make you something custom. I don't have any fishing lures up there yet, but in a couple weeks I will. I've got a local craft show that i got to go to, and... So I'm hesitant to put the lures up there or I'll be taking lures with me. But uh, after the craft show's over, I'm sure I'll have plenty to put up there. And so if you got a gentleman in your life that likes to fish, fish and lure would make him a nice Father's Day present, handmade, handcrafted, one of a kind. right around on the edges of them and get them all sanded nice and smooth and round. I haven't seen a fish yet that has sharp edges on him so you gotta round the edges off. You take a look at it and you want to see that it's all symmetrical. See, I'm looking at him and his belly is not even here. Can you see that? How the belly is not even? It's kind of lumpy. It's high on this side and lower on this side and higher on this side and lower on this side back here. This is not even. So, I'll take the high points off. You don't generally see lumpy fish. If you do, you better throw it back. Still a little high up here. So get a little better grip on it. 
take the material off there. You check it once in a while because you don't want to get too carried away and take it down too far. Now this side over here needs to be rounded off a little bit more. Move that top down. It's a little more work. too bad. Okay, that's that sandpaper. Now, we're going to go down a notch. This is the 240. We're going to go smoothing it. Now, you don't work with the the lower grits as much as you do the the stiffer grit. The stiffer grit, we really had to work it to go to smoothing it down. These, this is just a matter of, of honing at this point. We're just refining. And I want to sand the sides of it that weren't carved. Get all the rough Factory stuff right there sanded down so it's nice and smooth. And poor old arthritic hands. <laughs> Thumbs ain't wanting to hold nothing no more. Hoping that you can see just how smooth that's making that on there. Nothing rough, no lumps, no bumps. We want it just smooth as it can be. Change positions here just a little bit. My knee's starting to ache. So normally I'd get up and move around a little bit once in a while, but since I'm doing a video, I'm trying to do it all in one sitting. Get his nose real good there. Round it off on the sides. Say so that sanding cloth, you can turn it all different kinds of ways. You can't do that with a piece of sandpaper because you tear it and rip it and it would have a fit. Be destroyed in no time. This sanding cloth, man, this stuff lasts. It's a little expensive. However, when you take into consideration that it's going to last you a long, long, long time. Abernet is the name of it. You can look it up on the internet, find it.
And I don't have any sponsors paying me to say nothing about a product. So if, if I had somebody paying me to say something, I'd tell you that, hey, you know, they're paying me to represent a product. But right now there's no sponsors. I'm just telling you products that I like. I highly recommend this Abernet sanding cloth and um, Gord Master ink dyes are wonderful, or any of the Gord Master products. I love their entire line. I haven't found anything in Gord Master I'd be ashamed to own. You can use that not just for gourds, but for a lot of different things. That's coming along nicely. I'm real happy with the way this is going. I'm just about done with this grit, and then I'll go to the next grit. Oh, and I will mention something else. As you carve down on your stick, if you have a 12-inch stick like I have, you get down to these last two, you're going to want to carve out this end on this one up here and then you're going to want to carve out this end and leave the part in the middle you can come down here and make sure you get this this end all carved out then you start carving down a v-shape there and a little v-shape there until you carve there and then you have two shapes pretty much carved out you don't want to have a whole bunch of material on either one of them that you've got to try to carve out when you take them off of here because then you've lost your handle and it's more difficult to try to carve them so I'll just throw that in there for you have them pretty much roughed out when you take them cut them loose from each other little dimple on his nose that I'm trying to sand off of there. It's right there. You see that? That's going to go because I'll sand on it until it's gone. No dimples. Okay. Well, no, I still feel it. It's almost a no seam, but I feel it in there. Okay, now it's gone. We finally got it. All right. So there's that one. Now we're going to go down another grade. 320. And this is as low as I go with the sanding. 320 gets it. whole thing here with the 320. I start with all the the top and bottom and then I do the sides. I'm gonna get the nose and the tail with 320. Make sure they're good and smooth. Feeling good. Okay. Tail. Okay. 
good. Man. I'm doing myself on this one. Okay. We'll rub the side. Rub the other side. Take a good look at it. Now I'm pretty satisfied right there. That's a pretty good looking little fishy. Now I'm going to set him off to the side. Get his brother set off to the side there too. I'm going to knock that powder off of that. And I'm going to go to raking that powder up. And see there's not, not a whole, you know, you couldn't say, well, go home, tell daddy to sell the farm. Look at all the dust you got. Lord. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you get it raked up here. Every little bit counts. You know, and the, these fines are great for use in that Sawdusto product. And it's like I got paint over there on that side of my mat. All right. I'll take my glove off and put it back in my bag over here. And I'm going to get my little sawdust bags. And see, there's a, a bag of sawdust that I got for the dust. And then I got another bag that I keep the chips in. Just rake that right off the desk into the bag. And there's a little more up in there. I don't want to waste none of it. It's like gold. Gold dust. I'll zip my bag up so I don't spill that. And let's get our wood chips gathered up and then we'll wipe down the desk and wipe that piece down. I'll show you how to position for the holes for the eyelets. We've got these little teeny tiny eyelets that I use. That's what they look like right there. That's the eyelet. <laughs> Little teeny tiny fellers. And I use three of them on my lures. One in the belly, one in the nose, and one in the tail. And I epoxy them into the wood. And that way they're not going to come out. Let's get a piece of paper towel here and wipe down the desk and then we'll wipe down our wood pieces. This is like a tack cloth. Put a little alcohol on your paper towel and wipe everything down and it picks up all the fine. See, look there. It picks it all up. so that you don't have a bunch of dust on it. See, and I do the desk first because I don't want to wipe these things down and sit them down on an old dusty desk. So we take an alcohol on the paper towel and see how that's, you can see that it works wet. Alcohol will evaporate quickly. So they dry really fast. There's the one we just did. Here's one that I did earlier. Or no, I guess this is the one I just did. That other one is the one I did earlier. Now I know because of the little darkness in the wood grain on this one. Okay, so we'll set them aside here for a second. And I got some more shavings that are servicing here that was underneath the tack or underneath the sandpaper. All right, now, get rid of that piece of paper towel, and I'm going to show you something here. I take a stylus. You know what a stylus is? We call them pokey tools. This is the tail. See, so here's, here's our little fish. This will be the belly down here. This is the tail. Right in the center of this tail, I take my stylus, and I just poke down in there just a little bit. Just a little bit. I mean, it's not even, it's maybe a sixteenth of an inch, okay? 
that's going to be enough that I can get the eyelet to screw into that hole. We're not trying to make a great big old gashy hole in it. We're not trying to split the wood. We're just enough that we can get the eyelet. Here's the eyelet. And it'll go in that hole and screw down. There'll be some epoxy on it when I go to screw it in. But, you know, to give you a basic idea, and I don't know that I can do real good here with this arthritis in my thumb to show you. I usually get them in a grip of a um, pair of pliers when I get ready to do this. And that's all I have to do is hold the pliers and hold the, the lure. But, yeah, it'll go in that little hole. But you put just a little hole. Find it here with the stylus. There it is. And you just poke your little hole down in your piece of wood. Then you're going to want to put one in the belly. So I come right about the center of the belly. And I'm going to poke a little hole there. Just enough to where I could get the eyelet started. And I do that again right in the center of the nose. See, just a little hole right there. What has to happen to this next is that I take, mix up some epoxy. I, I make a whole pile of these, so I do them all at once. Mix up some epoxy, and I screw the screw eyes in those three places before I paint it. Then I do the hydro dip. Like I say, I'll do a, a show on that so you see how to do the hydro dip. And once they're hydro drip, dipped and dried, then I put triple thick. Krylon clear coat on them. Once that's dry, then I can put the treble hooks on them. So that's how this whole thing works. So I hope that I was pretty clear with my description on all that. If you have any questions, be sure and ask them. You know, I, my, that's what I'm here for, is to teach you how to do this stuff. So if you liked what I brought you, if you enjoyed this, um, be sure and let me know. Leave me a thumbs up on it, you know, and, and leave me some comments and let me know uh, how we're doing with this. Because, you know, you're my patrons and, and I'm here to, to help you. That's what it's all about. So with that being said, there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's Crafty. Be like Brenda.